I got it started. Uh, Travis, are you part of... Put your hand up if you're part of Human Dow. Human Dow. The human doll person should be coming in here. Sorry about the quiet, you guys. We just want to try and get everything organized and make sure when they come in here that we are good to go. But I'm excited for this space. It will be a good, good discussion with them about uh, their project. And yeah, I'm excited. And we got some good giveaways today too. I believe in total we'll give away I believe two hundred dollars in cryptocurrency altogether. So excited about that! Thanks, you guys, for showing up. Oh, and there's Human Dow right there. I'll add them up here. Thanks, you guys, for showing up. Oh, and there's Human Dow right there. Hey, how are you? I'll add them up here. We've got some tweets out already too, and some shares. So there should be more hey, people how are you? on. And we usually I am good. Let me uh, send out a tweet here. Much Let everybody know it's starting. In a second. Yeah, for sure. And we got some tweets out already too, and some shares. So there should be more people rolling in. We usually give ourselves a few minutes just to get a bunch of people in here. Is there anyone else from your team coming here today? Is there anyone else from your team? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, my friend. Uh, we'll, we'll have to wait okay. until later for your question. I have question. Uh, human a question. I'm human buyer in my house right now. But uh, how you can differentiate your product in the uh, market? Uh, yeah, what was that? The so we'll, we'll wait until we should. Yeah. So that's my yeah. question. Yeah, there's one video for a second. Um, we're going to get questions. Okay, I couldn't understand that very well. It, the microphone sounded, <coughs> sounded a little muffled. Yeah, we're going to do questions. We're going to do questions yeah. a little bit later. Um, I'm going to yeah, bump it down for a second. Uh, we're going to do questions when the questions flow. So we're going to get the space about 10, uh, 10 to 15 minutes uh, to get everybody in. Uh, if you're in the space right now, guys, go ahead and tweet the space out so we can uh, build, build the room faster. Uh, we are going to have a day with you and Dow, and they're going to come in and talk about their project. Uh, if you guys want to ask questions, we're going to have a question part a little bit later on. Um, we will be giving away uh, uh, prizes today uh, for participation as well as just being in the space. So, guys, just stay patient for a little bit, and then we'll get everybody uh, in, and then we'll be going. Yeah, I know. I should have some kind of great music. That's the hardest part is just to wait for the room to kind of fill up. But I mean, the market today, too, you're not seeing as many people in the space right now. Is what it is. Yeah, we're going to have to wait for the room to fill up. Yeah, we're going to have to wait for the room to kind of fill up. But I mean, the market today, too. You're not seeing as many people in the space right now, too, which is what it is. Well, Twitter had, a, Twitter had an issue with the spaces earlier today, um, so I think it, you just give it time, everybody will come in for sure. Um, and then, guys, if, if you're in the room, go ahead and tweet the space out as well and get the room filled up a little bit faster. Yeah, definitely. It's so, it's so funny how the market works. Like, uh, crypto Twitter works like the market. <laughs> the market's up, the whole Twitter is up, and it, the market's down. Everybody's like, 
saying uh, so funny. But yeah, I think it's, exciting. Just, it's exciting times. I mean, I think it's good. I mean, if we haven't seen, I mean, the market was up at three trill, uh, just you know, a couple like not even a month ago. Uh, so to see it come down to the the, low, the high one, I mean, in the low twos, so definitely some great opportunities out there. Um, and it's good to see projects still working like Human Dow as well. Again, guys, if you just came in the room, get some people to request to come up. Uh, we're not going to uh, have people come up until the question part of the AMA. Um, right now, we're just going to fill up the room. Uh, if you did just get in the room, go ahead and tweet the space out. We'll get started here in about seven minutes. Um, and then we'll have you come down, go ahead and take a uh, come in and talk about the project. I wonder what would be the easiest app to play just a little bit of music at the start date. I wonder what would be the easiest app to play just a little bit of music at the start, date. Eh? Put your mic next to a speaker. <laughs> I guess that's the easiest way, for sure. I don't have really any good music. That's my issue. I'm not a music listener. I mean, the operators are good They put up something. Share via, and then if the you share way via, I do it is there'll be an option for uh, the, the Twitter, like do a tweet right on now. there, and then if you right click on it, like you do the little um, I don't know what you call, but share via, and then if you do share via, there'll be an option for uh, the the Twitter space that you're in right now. Oh, okay. Team coming in as well? Um, there's Arnie is Arnie .east is part of the team. Okay. We can add him up if you want him yeah. alongside you or totally up. It's always good to do that. Sure, no problem. I don't know what his schedule is like, but um, yeah. You just throw him on the spot. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's always good to do that. It's kind of funny. We've noticed this the past couple of spaces that we've ran is definitely like we were able to get a couple hundred people into a space, but with the way the markets are, it's definitely 
I know. It's kind of funny. We've noticed this the past couple of spaces that we've ran is definitely like we were able to get a couple hundred people into a space, but with the way the markets are, it's definitely went down a tiny bit. But once things rolling, we'll definitely. That is so much fun. Yeah. Crypto Twitter and stuff. For sure. Oh, yeah. So are you from oh, yeah, the, uh, the states? Or? Right now we're at like minus 27 today, yeah, so from, Celsius. I don't know what that I, is in Fahrenheit. I'm from Canada myself, so. Oh, yes. Friends to the north. Oh, yeah, the freezing. Right now we're at like minus 27 today, so Celsius. I don't know what that Ooh. is. Yeah, it's like minus 16.6 in Fahrenheit. I think that's universal for cold, cold though. Yeah, <laughs> it sounds Sound cold. <laughs> yeah, it's like minus sixteen point six in Fahrenheit. It's cold. I didn't. I. I yeah, would not be. Well, I mean, I would not be outside in an environment. One of the colder parts. Where <laughs> yeah, that's. We weren't having any snow this year. Anything, huh? and then all of a sudden, north of the last north. Week, you know, it started to get cold. I knew it was coming. Uh, well, it was only a time before now, right? You know, this is where I am. So one of the colder parts, for sure. Can't have Christmas. We snow, weren't so. having any snow this year or anything, and then all of a sudden we got a pile last week. Unless you're lucky, you guys know this year. I knew it was coming. It was only a matter of time before it happens. Yeah, it can get bad, though. Can't have Christmas without snow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sometimes it seems to have your... You're lucky, way. like you guys down in the States. Yeah, you can get bad though. You know, some that's your frigid, frigidness. Yeah, sometimes it seems to head your way. There we go. Now we got a decent yeah, group. At least starting to get a little bit busier and busier. Yeah, you got to start these. Um, you got to get them time, huh? At least for the spaces. Yeah, yeah. It, it always takes a couple of minutes. Again, guys, if you did just come into the space, uh, we're not going to have anybody up except the team right now. Uh, once we have the question floor open, we'll open up the floor for everyone. Uh, if you tweet this space out, uh, that can also help us out. And then, again, we're going to do a giveaway today uh, for participation as well as um, being in the space. Um, so lucky people will be able to uh, win out some cash brand. Oh, not cash, sorry. <laughs> a couple of people will be able to win some prizes. So uh, just stick around, and we're going to actually get started here in about – I think in the next 30 seconds. Sounds good. Does my mic sound a heck of a lot better today, Vibin? Give a couple more groups just in case to get her going. Does my mic sound a heck of a lot better today, Vibin? Yes, man. Good job. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I was hoping so. So I guess the first thing is, can you kind of introduce yourself to everyone in here, uh, your name and, and a vote? All right, so uh, I guess we'll go ahead and get started. You already sure. start? Uh, yeah, for sure. So I guess yeah. is, can you kind of introduce yourself to everyone in here, uh, your name and, and a vote, uh, human dollars? Sure. Uh, my name is Christopher Chase on my account on Twitter as well. Um, Human Dow is, I guess, my baby. I guess I started it. I don't feel like a you know founder. I just feel like a member. But um, you know, this all started by accident. It was never planned to create a Human Dow or a Dow at all. I just had time over the summer. Went down the crypto rabbit hole of play to earn. Liked everything I saw, liked everything I was reading, you know, did my due diligence, started playing Axie. I'm not a big gamer, but I thought it was a fun strategy game, like Pokemon meets poker. Um, so let my kids play it, they enjoyed it. And then, you know, obviously we knew and heard about the scholarship programs and being able to sponsor people. You know, you lend them your, your Axies and they play for you. You know, unlike art NFTs, you know, that, that just sit in your wallet and look pretty for you. 
you know, if you have gaming NFTs, especially in the Axie world, it's better to put them to use and just let them sit there because they could be, you know, farming SLP, the in-game token. So we started adding, you know, a few scholars through just through Twitter DMs and, you know, more came. And when we got to about 10, we decided to open up a server so, you know, we could talk to each other instead of through the DMs. And they kept asking me, you know, can we invite our friends? Can we invite our friends? And I said, sure, why not? Um, and thinking, you know, a few people would show up. But after like five days, it was already like 2,000 people. And, um, you know, at that point, it was like, there's a lot of demand here. You know, this, this, I've been in crypto for, you know, a long time. And you know, I've seen the beginning of Ethereum, the beginning of DeFi, and, you know, play to earn, I think, is just as disruptive. As the, as the previous things I mentioned. So, you know, I was like, this could be a, an interesting way to wrap like a social impact project around this revenue stream, around this play to earn revenue stream. And, uh, you know, from there, the human DAO started and was born. Um, you know, and all, what we are, a lot of people get us confused. They think that, you know, we're just this gaming guild. We're actually a social impact DAO that has a gaming guild inside of it. Right? You know, we're not a gaming guild gone DAO. We're going to use, our mission is pretty, it's, it's, it's broad, but it's pretty simple. We're going to improve human life through crypto, right? The low hanging fruit right now is play to earn. You know, that's where we can have direct impact immediately by lending assets. The DAO lends assets to people. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, whatever comes next in crypto, Whatever sounds this amazing, the new like, business model that uh, grows us, the platform that can help people, help people out we're going to use it. We're going to utilize it and, and, give them and the uh, you know, grow the DAO from there. So that they can make a living that's in, a, that's in a little bit about the world. Is that being correct? That really sounds amazing. Like, uh, the platform is just to help people out in the world, basically, and give them a salary so that they can make a living in, in their part of the world. Is that seem correct? Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's the, the most direct route because it's the play-to-earn business model. We, we also want to help. We have four core pillars at the Human Dollar. Um, wages, you know, that's, that's one of our top goals is to provide wages. Um, education, you know, when the server grew like that, none of the, the, the people coming into the server knew anything about crypto. They just heard from their friends or family that, you know, you could play video games for money. So they have no idea about any of this. crypto networks, DAOs, Bitcoin, Ethereum, you know, none of this, wallets. So our main goal is because there's such demand, you know, coming, the demand is coming from the bottom up in the crypto right now. You know, that's what play to earn is open the door, right? You don't have to exchange your dollars or your currency for crypto. You can actually earn it, right? So people that don't have assets, don't have money, they're earning it, right? And so this opened the floodgates fr from the from the bottom of the socioeconomic ladder to enter crypto because they're earning it. But, you know, we want to hit them over the head with some crypto education, you know, because the more people who learn about crypto, its use cases, its benefits, you know, they, they themselves understand and see the promise this holds, like we all did. You know, we're all here because of that, right? So we're going to educate them on crypto, you know, not just stuff in the weeds, you know, just top level stuff. And, you know, when they go through these learning modules, they're going to be airdrop um, uh, DAO tokens. So they're going to actually gain equity, right? Uh, and we have other plans, you know, for identity um, and uh, other things. But, yeah, they're going to, you know, they're going to get some equity through the, the education. And then they can have a say in the human DAO as it moves forward, right? So this is a very grassroots, very community-centered, community-owned project. Um, the other two pillars are um, funding, which, you know, is, is down the road more like, you know, uh, micro lending, stuff like that for the underserved, by the underserved, like a Kava, you know, is the Web2 equivalent, I would say. Um, but that's more that's more down the road now. And, and uh, the other core pillar is meals. We want to monthly take a portion of our revenues as a DAO and just buy meals, you know, like no, through No Kid Hungry or um, the World Food Program, United Nations World Food Program, and uh, you know we can have a direct impact, a direct social impact through that as well. You know, so it, 
immediately. So education, kind of funny, you know, you providing the, meals, the meals for those folks like that need, and uh, wages, and you know, that's, that's how like, we're starting to build this social impact I'm project. Trying to help organize it where they're giving 500 uh, kind of funny you mentioned the meals, the meals actually families, like Annie and another aspect of the currency place did a big donation in the Philippines and trying to help organize it where they're, they're giving 500 uh, basically meals to families in this one barangay in the Philippines so I'm super happy about it and super happy that he would go about doing it and I'm now super happy to hear the project that looking at doing the same kind of thing because we need to impact the, the other countries right i think that's going to be the most positive uh spot i guess in a way of cryptocurrency is to help these countries that didn't have a chance before to to be able to be a part of something yeah i agree you know uh, like i said cri prior to play to earn crypto has been a top-down phenomenon you know the top of the socioeconomic ladder the, the people the middle class the upper class in the west but you know with the advent of play to earn and, and play to earn is just starting like you know this is a zero to one moment um, and, and you know I, I i'm pretty sure that this play to earn business model is, is pretty validated now judging by you know, ubisoft all these other traditional game studios trying to get into the blockchain gaming world uh, along with all the venture capital you know you see pouring into the into the metaverse now right so so yeah you know, this this these funds can go to help a lot of people in these underserved communities worldwide, global. And, and when you do that, when you show, you know, these regulators or whoever, you know, what crypto can do on the flip side, you know, not just uh, scamming people or making the rich richer, um, you show like direct impacts through, you know, meals, uh, providing wages, you know, it's kind of hard to argue against that, you know. So uh, that provides another whole part of our offense when we, you know, when, when, to get this more accepted, you know, so that's why it's important to educate, you know, these masses that are coming in to crypto now about crypto because they become crypto stewards in their own locations and, and they can help spread the, the good, the good crypto word, you know, and all it is, is, you know, transparency and openness. That's, that's the, that's the values of crypto. And that's why we'll always win compared to legacy systems. Uh, so. So yeah, it's exciting, and you know we have a lot of other plans. It's an ambitious project, you know. It, it's it's the way we structure the tokenomics. Um, you know, we ha half of the tokens, fifty five percent goes to the community, gets distributed over eleven years. You know, so that has good things for investors who want to be early in something like this, and people you know who aren't yet in crypto. You know, there's not many people here yet, right? And so in like five years, eight years, we want to make sure we have How, those for tokens that still are to, to say, you know, incentivize them to, to learn about crypto or and to, to contribute to the DAO. So, price. yeah, we set up the um, tokenomics a little bit different. Huh? For people that are wanting to, say, join and earn a wage or whichever, how would they go about doing that through you guys? You just join the server. You can go to the site, you'll see community, you can click on that. Uh, you go to the Discord server, and uh, I believe now we have it where, it, you know, a pop-up will happen. They'll say, are you, what are, you, are you looking to help build the DAO? Are you looking to, you know, get a scholarship? Uh, you just pick the one you want to do. You know? and, and we need we need builders, too, as well. You know, this is an ambitious project. That's amazing. How long have you guys been running Crypto is still new. Tomorrow. So, um, you know, we need builders and, and uh, scholars as well. So, yeah, if you want to uh, apply for a scholarship, you know, just follow the instructions in the survey. That's amazing. How long have you guys been running it for so far now? Um, this is, I think October 2nd was when we announced the, the DAO. Um, you know, I, I, when this started, I had to make sure that the community was going to, you know, take the reins, you know, I, I can't run the server and, and do everything else. So, you know, they showed a lot of initiative. They wanted to, to build this DAO. So I think we announced it December, I mean, October 2nd. So, you know, it's, I think the server's only been open for maybe 12 weeks now. Um, and we're at 18,000, almost 19,000 
um, people. So it's not, we're still young, very young. You know, we had a token watch um, uh, two weeks, about a week and a half ago now. Yeah, um, December 1st and December 5th. Um, and we, we, we did a dual chain token launch on Polygon and the East main chain, you know, because, you know, most of our community can't afford to eat gas. Um, mo most people don't want to pay these gas prices. So um, we had a dual chain auction, which was like one of the first to happen simultaneously on, on layer two and layer one. And, you know, uh, that auction raised $3.7 million for the, for the Dow Treasury. So, you know, that was, that was pretty good for, uh, uh, you know, we don't have any VCs or private sales. You know, we talk about that a lot, and there's nothing wrong with VCs. You know, they, they are necessary in many ways, but when you're trying to do a social impact project, a community-owned project, you know, giving somebody 25% or more of, of the tokens, you know, it just doesn't seem like it, it, a good idea, you know, for the, for the long term. So, uh, you know, we went to the community first, and uh, that's, that's what we did uh, about a week and a half ago now. That's really cool. Yeah. I was going to ask you, uh, can you run through you guys' tokenomics? Sure. Uh, you know, 55% of the tokens go to the community, right? 15% um, is for the treasury. The community owns the treasury. That's how a DAO is supposed to work, right? Um, so that's about 70% that's in control of the community. Now, we have 10% for the founders. 10% for builders, 5% for advisors, and uh, another 5% that went into that public uh, auction. So if you, the builders is just to in, incentivize people to work on this full time, right? This is, this DAO, this DAO, this community is different than, you know, I'm sure many people here have been in DAOs, you know, and it's much different. Like 99% of our community, like I said, they don't know about DAOs, they're not here to build a DAO, right? So. We need those builders on the backside to start building and, and scaling and growing this uh, this or this organization, you know, this project. So we're using that 10% allotment to, to help, you know, incentivize builders to come work, you know, full time on this. So you know, I would argue that that 10% should be considered community as well, you know, because community people are going to be the ones stepping up and helping. So that's 80% of the tokens that are controlled and going to the community. Uh, over, you know, and like I said, 55% goes, it's a one-year lock on the community, then it's a 10-year vesting, so it gets distributed to like 500 million tokens over uh, 10 years. So, so, and again, within that community allocation, we have different initiatives, right? Like, uh, you know, retention of growth, DAO contributors, uh, rewards for liquidity pools, and stuff like that. So, you know, we just wanted to scale it out so we could, you know, entice and incentivize those people down the road, right, that, that come to the DAO in year five or year eight or even year ten, you know, because a lot of people aren't here yet, but they're coming. And um, we want to make sure we have those incentives so they can learn about crypto, they can get equity in the DAO as well. So those are the biggest things is that we don't have, you know, if you look at other, we get compared to, to YDG, Merit all the time because of the play to earn aspect, right? Um, but, you know, those kind of guild-gone DAOs, they have 30, 35 to 45% going to, you know, VCs and founders, right? Um, and that's a small group. And one of those groups gave the other group money. So you're kind of aligned incentively, right? Uh, and when you have that much of the tokens, you pretty much have the say of the, the DAO. So, um, you know, we, it was important, a social impact project who, uh, once again, is, has a gaming DAO inside of it. We're not trying to be a gaming DAO, but we do have a gaming DAO inside of us. We want to compete. We want to do all the other things that gaming DAOs do, right? Um, but it was important that you know that social impact didn't have that kind of chemistry and kind of makeup from the onset. That's really dope. I think as as um, Web three progresses and it starts becoming more of a main thing, you know, people will start understanding the DAOs a little bit more. Um, in, in terms of, of what DAOs are. I think a lot of people, you know, they're so used to what mainstream is doing and, and don't realize the importance of what a DAO is and what it offers. Um, what would be the, if, 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 if somebody was new and, and just getting into uh, 
into a space or, or just hearing about a doubt, what would be your, your basic layman's term definition of what you think are the easiest way to describe a doubt? Well, I mean, the easiest way is it's just a, it's a way for like-minded individuals to coordinate, whether that's around uh, a, a mission, a hobby, an interest, you know, whatever it is. Uh, you know, there's investment doubts, there's, you know, there's gaming guild doubts, you know, there's, there's going to be a doubt for everything. I mean, all it is is a way for people in different parts of the world to coordinate, you know, and, and to use the tokens, the tokenomics of the DAO to align the incentives, you know. Um, but uh, DAOs are very are a very big deal, in my opinion. Uh, you know, it's it's the evolution of an organization. And if you go back and look at history of organizations, you can see, like, humongous progress is made. Just, you know, like in corporations themselves, four or five hundred years ago, a lot of history buff, but um, you know, when when corporations started forming and people could buy equity and stuff like that, you know, business started taking off, right? Then back in 50 years ago, maybe 60 years ago now, Wyoming created the LLC, right? It's just another way. So now individuals can take stabs at entrepreneurship, you know, without losing it all, risking it all, right? So you know, a DAO is just another form of that. It's just less centralized, um, but it's just a group of people coming together for a like-minded goal and mission. Yeah, I like that. I like that, man. Uh, Cause, I, like I said, man, people just don't realize how big DAO, how, how big DAOs are gonna be, right? Um, and I'm excited. Um, and then, what about uh, any partnerships that you guys currently have, or, or anything you have coming up that you want to talk about as far as partnerships uh, with, with, uh, you know, any type of other, I wouldn't say venture capitalists, but you know, uh, any partnerships in general. Yeah, we uh, we're partnered with uh, a lot proof of attendance protocol we're going to be using them heavily uh, to, to incentivize within the DAO and outside the DAO you know that's people don't know about co-op they should definitely go look into it it's you know it's basically like an NFT drop or a badge or something you know it has some kind of meaning so like one of the ways we'll be utilizing it in, in our um, in our uh, community will be you know let's say we have Axie, and uh, these applicants don't know how to play Axie, right? So they need to go watch the scholar stream or uh, attend Q and A's and ask questions. So you can have, you know, these bots that will, after 20 minutes or 30 minutes or after the event's over, it will automatically DM the people who attended with that badge. So it's like a resume, almost, right? Um, these badges that they will accumulate inside of human DAO. So um, yeah, Poop's a great one. Bankless DAO. A lot of people have heard of Bankless DAO. We have the same overlapping mission, you know, to make the world go uh, decentralized, to go bankless, you know. So um, we partner with them. They they build a lot of cool tools. Have a lot of you know great builders. Um, Ready Player DAO. You know, they're they're another uh, like gaming guild, right? Um, but you know, talking with them, they they are very mission driven. You know, same as Human DAO. Um, so that was fun to hear about and to talk with them that you know they they've been around longer than us so you know we partnered with them and you know we don't really know what that'll look like in the future but you know we are aligned on the same overarching goals and the same mission um, so you know that should that should be a nice partnership as well and you know we have a lot of advisors another part of the, the tokenomics is that there's no core team that controls the the, the treasury you know we we didn't have the blessing of a, of a well-known VC, so we wanted to go out and get well-known people, you know, that had nothing to do with human health. I mean, obviously, it's only two, three months old, right? So, um, you know, we have people like DeFi Dad, Mona from Enzyme Protocol, um, a lot more that are, you know, advising. But they're also multi. Some of them are also multi, uh, multi-sig key holders over the treasury, right? So, you know, the the funds that were raised in that uh, token auction, you know, it's controlled by a multi-sig, you know, not me, not anybody from the team, it's not just the core, there's not a multi-sig of core founders and, you know, investors, these are people from outside, so, um, you know, they, they will enact the will of the community, um, but yeah, that's, that's a little bit about those partnerships, and as we grow, you know, we're, we're right now, we're in, you know, heads down building the, the essential building blocks of any DAO, right, you know, we release a liquidity pool. If people are interested to buy the H DAO token, it's on Polygon. Um, it's an uh, it's an eighty twenty pool. Most of the things we're going to do is on Polygon because, again, you know, most of the the, the community can't afford ETH gas fees. 
And, you know, if you're airdropping tokens to people and they can't move it into a staking contract to get that reward, then you just really done nothing. And then only the rich get richer, right? The people who can afford these gas fees. So we are going to do governance on Polygon, uh, staking on Polygon. You know, the liquidity pool that the DAO set up is on Polygon. Um, and it's not that tw- it's 10 tweets. You could see it in, in, for those listening. But, um, but yeah, you know, Polygon is a, is a big one for us because of you know, the, the cheap fees and stuff. So, yeah, it's pretty exciting. Yeah, man, Polygon did an amazing job, uh, you know, building that bridge and, and being able to use that bridge, you know, just having some Ethereum as collateral and, you know, being able to let the users use that bridge as well. Um, that's super cool. Keep the fees down. And then um, tell us more about the, um, like, when you guys, um, you guys are going to have a, a lending protocol as well, right? Um, I did, there's a funding protocol. I, yeah, that's down the road. We don't, we're not focus on that yet um, okay. and that will be if the community okays it you know um, so but that's not in the in the plans right now what we want to do is get those education modules up because you know we keep getting a lot of people coming to the server mm-hmm. and, and you know the quicker we can teach them and airdrop them some, some tokens some equity right you know the, the more they stay around the more they spread the crypto word and, and they also become human doubt ambassadors you know we want this to have an IRL a, a, a real life experience for the human doubt like you know how we have Bitcoin meetups you know, I, I want to have human DAO meetups all over. So people who join the human DAO early, but still early, it'll probably be early for the next six months or a year, who knows. But as you become, you know, you can become an ambassador. And that's why we have so much of those tokens going to the community. So we can incentivize you to get out there and start a meetup, right? Then you can use things like a POAP, where people just scan a QR code and say, yeah, I was here, I participated, you know, and that moves them to the front of the line when they want a scholarship for it. You know whatever comes next in crypto that we utilize so uh so yeah and then what about um you guys what about you talking about building uh are you guys having the plans to maybe build something uh in the metaverse for the community or the community uh coming together uh and voting i guess to build something in the metaverse yeah i mean that's always a possibility you know people can use the, the dow platform as a launch pad you know artists from underserved communities, um, musicians, all that stuff. But what we're really going to be trying to uh, utilize here is the um, ENS. You know, the uh, we have humandow.eth, but, you know, ENS, you can create subdomains, right? But nobody does that because it's too expensive to keep creepy subdomains. But now they're going to be releasing on L2s, and it will be cheap to free almost uh, to create subdomains. So when these people from these underserved communities come in, we're going to give them that identity, right? Like, you know, uh, stanley.humandow.eth, and then everything they do in the DAO and the co-op, they, the badges, they, they accumulate, everything can be there, they can get their payouts there. Um, you know, it's their identity in the metaverse, right? Um, and, and they, and again, if they go through the, the modules, the education modules, they will have equity as well in the DAO, and they can stake that just like other people do, and, you know, grow that stack of H. tokens. So, yeah, that's that's the plans right now. But you know, this is open to the community. Like, you know, we're we're going to be releasing the governance here this week. You know, the platforms will be using Snapshot and some other platforms to, to help us. But you know, what the community decides is what we should uh, pivot to. I like that. I guess my last my last question, um, and then Scott has any more he can ask, and then we can open it up uh, the floor. I guess my last question: What if there was a uh, if, if there was a investor who just wanted to? Um, how would you tell an investor who just wanted to potentially just have a token, and not really participate? Maybe just like a I guess in, in, from an investment point, uh, that just wanted a whole long term and not really worry about uh, showing up. What would be the encouragement of a doubt for uh, in your opinion? Yeah, I mean, you know, you could always stake your tokens. Um, you know, we're, we're going to have some nice liquidity rewards and staking rewards. But, you know, with your stake tokens, you can participate in governance. You know, you can have a vote, you know, with those those tokens. Um, that's the biggest utility. But, yeah, I mean, if you just want to buy, then I would suggest looking at our tokenomics because they are different. They are very unusual um, than, you know, 99% of the projects that have launched recently, especially, you know, uh, like I said, Having that low circulating supply for a decade is, uh, you know, fundamentally that relieves a lot of sell pressure over, you know, the first year. So, um, you know, that that's 
and again, we did we didn't that just is side benefits, right? To early investors. Um, to know that the, 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 the admissions, the, the token, tokens coming into circulation on a yearly thing and it have it play out for so long. Um, but, you know, like I said, the reason we did that was so we can incentivize the underserved communities of the future that enter crypto. But, um, yeah, you know, just check out the tokenomics if you're interested. Uh, again, you know, if you it's on Polygon, the balance report. You know, we're getting a lot of interest from centralized exchanges, but, you know, we don't have much to do with that. Uh, you know, it's up to them who they add so yeah i mean we're young you're going to be hearing about us much more especially as we branch out outside of play to earn i think people will see you know how this DAO structure will work you know because what we're going to be doing is setting up sub DAOs for each opportunity to bring in revenues you know obviously we have an axie sub DAO now that uh you know is for axie right different strategies inside the axie world which there's multiples, you know, breeding, different kinds of the land game when it comes out. But then other sub DAOs will be created for new play to earn games and other things outside of play to earn, right? So, you know, this is not just a, like a, I don't like to use the word charity because people think, you know, handouts, uh, donations, and things like that. Um, this is like an evolution of a charity. This is a charity wrapped around a revenue stream. And if you believe in crypto, if you believe that play to earn. I mean, gaming is huge. People play games for 10 hours a day, and they don't make any tokens off of it. They don't make any money. They don't own the assets. So, you know, it might take a while for these gamers to get it, um, you know, that this is truly fundamentally different. And, but they're going to they're gonna realize it. And, and, you know, why wouldn't you want to earn some tokens or be able to sell your assets whenever you want to, you know, when you're done playing that game? So, uh, you know, I think the masses are coming... Which NFTs, finds, we're you know, NFTs, and Compass, Play to Earn, and Blockchain Game, so, yeah. That's super dope. Scott, you're up. Yeah, I was going to say, it's kind of funny, some of the people are realizing that they're missing out on a large amount to come into cryptocurrency. Now you have Ubisoft. It's coming out with their own NFTs and that, which is a great move. Yeah. And other people are starting to come into it. I think they're realizing that they're missing a, on a large market. Like, like it's not even, and like you said, it's not even started. We're just at the very beginning of it. And it sounds like with your project, as long as people are willing to learn and grow themselves, that's to the benefit of them and being part of the human DAO. Yeah, you know, and this that. You know, kind of mind-boggling. I didn't think there was this many gamers in the world, but apparently there's like 3.5, almost 4 billion gamers, like half the human population, you know? So um, even if we take a small piece of that, which we will, um, you know, uh, we're probably going to eat up all of it over the next decade. But we're also, the cool thing about Play to Earn is it's attracting people that are not gamers. You know, I don't know if anybody here saw the uh, documentary. I think it was actually put out called Play to Earn on you on uh, YouTube. You can just you go to the search bar and put Play to Earn. It's like 17-minute documentary. But it was about the Philippines and how it actually has, you know, changed things there for people and how, you know, th this revenue, these wages, you know, are, are more than what they were making prior. And, you know, you, they had an example of Lola and Lolo, you know, uh, grandma and grandpa, right? And uh, they have never played the games before. You know, they owned a bodega forever. Um, and obviously, you know, coronavirus, COVID really messed up a lot of things for the developing world. Um, so, so you know, they were, pl they were playing on, on an Android phone, you know, Axie Infinity for a few hours every day, making more money than they were at the bodega. So, you know, I think play to earn, you know, especially if you believe in like a UBI or something, you know, instead of doing nothing, playing a game is better than doing nothing, right? But, um, you know, people associate UBI, you know, especially in America, with like living wages of 500, 1,000, probably a few thousand a month, right, to, to be able to live well in America. Um, but, you know, in other, it, there's almost 3 billion people oh, yeah. that live on $5 or less you know, in the world. So, you know, this play to earn market isn't just about games. Like you know, this is a new way to earn, and the metaverse is just starting. So yeah, it's going to be exciting. Oh well, yeah, my wife is from the Philippines, and I've been there a couple of times, and definitely see 
like when you're in those spaces in Manila driving around or other areas, you see a lot of like gaming, uh, they call them tarp ones, they're like uh, signs and stuff where they're showing like they're playing Call of Duty or they're on this team or you go to the malls and you see people all dressed up in like gaming stuff. So, they're you know, advertising their team or whatever, so you know exactly how huge it is there. I haven't been there since actually the movie kicked off, but I don't like how like my my nephew over there they play it. So and I know it's big over there. There's people that bought houses and and different things from being involved in the game. So I I love that that's given them an opportunity to do something and, and feel accomplished too as well. Yeah, it's amazing to see. You know, I mean, uh, there's these, this community is so grateful too because these this possibility didn't exist. You know, it's not like you know they were making ten dollars a day or something, and now they went to do this. You know, they they, they didn't have uh, you know these options at all. Many of them. So yeah, you know, even if it supplements an income, it's still better than you know the options that were there prior. So yeah, it's just an it's another whole just dimension to. <laughs> You know, crypto is just disrupting this whole field. And, and like you said, you know, gaming is, has just only gone up. It's just increasing year after year after year. And it's huge in Asia. You know, so, um, yeah, I mean, it's going to be, we're going to eat into that market, you know, and um, I think there's, you know, the, people always like to think that these guilds are competing against each other. But, you know, there's just so much. There's so many people that, you know, we're talking about billions of people, you know. <laughs> So I think in the largest guild is like YGG, and they have like seven, maybe eight thousand scholars now. You know, so like we're here at the genesis, and you know the only thing that we, human DAO is just trying to improve life through crypto. Right now, the, the easiest way to do that is play to earn. Uh, we'll continue doing that because obviously, you know, we're very bullish on play to earn and crypto gaming. Um, but you know, there's other things that are coming. You know, move to earn, translate to earn, all kinds of stuff, right? So. Uh, we'll utilize those things and to help improve life. And, you know, as we go, we're going to educate people on crypto. So we're going to build up a huge army of crypto uh, knowledge. Are you open about to that. answer and some questions and from the be, you know, well? well, Then it's undeniable, right? Then it's undeniable. So oh, okay. you'll be a force to okay. be recognized. So anybody that wants to ask a big question, definitely uh, request yeah. a topic. Uh, we'll open to we'll answer some well. questions from the floor now. As well. Yep, let's uh, do it. Okay, so anybody that wants to ask a question, definitely uh, request up top here, ahead, and then we'll your, we'll bring you up. I'm gonna let uh, Hammy here go first. <laughs> go ahead, Hammy. Once your your mic is on. What's up, y'all? Hello. What's up, brother? Hey, not much, man. Not much. Bitcoin's been playing with my emotions a lot. Um, but I got these questions. <laughs> Welcome to the party. <laughs> I got these questions. Um, so you said we can make money off this uh, this game. How much? How much? Give me a low and a high. Uh, is it like skill based? Like if I'm a badass, can I go in there, win a few games, and then make some money? Or is it like a duration? No, yeah, it's skill based. So the better players earn more, more SLP, right? Uh, that's the token, the end game token everybody plays Axie for. Um, smooth love potion. Uh, and how much, like, you know, it's crypto, right? So crypto is volatile in general, and, and you know, food, you know, it's existence, and it's gone all the way to 40 cents, right? Now I believe it's around three or four cents. Um, but you know the, the scholars can make you know three. It, it, when I'm here at this at this level, uh, you can make around three to ten dollars a day, uh, just depending on their skill level, right? Um, and, and they they make the uh, and this majority of the hey, be, before you go before you okay. go on. Um, so your project, do you you guys have a game? Or are you talking about another project now? No, we don't have a game. Because we, we are going to buy assets in games. Oh, buy assets in games. All right. 
All right. No, I got, I, I got in here a little bit a uh, little bit late, so sorry if that wasn't a good question. I thought you were um, you were going through your spiel about how all of these people can play or do the play to earn games and make uh, good money at it. And I was just um, I thought you were releasing a game. Um, no, when I when I say that, I mean not you know middle class America aren't going to be able to uh, you know make a living. Uh, that's why there's such a groundswell from you know underserved communities coming into this play to earn uh, uh, dynamic because even at five dollars a day, that's a huge deal. For, oh yeah, you know, literally a billion people or more. So. No, absolutely. Uh, do you see that space is getting pretty crowded uh, soon? Or um, so? Play to earn? Yes. No, I, I don't. I mean. You know, the, Axie is one style of the game, right? There's shooter games, sports games. There's all kinds of games. You know, and we're, you know, they haven't even released. I mean, 20, 2022 is going to have a lot of releases, and then you're going to have the traditional game studios come come into this as well. But um, no, you know, I, I I don't think I think crypto's over uh, uh, overheating. You know, in general, um, I'm I'm one of those rare crypto uh, Bitcoin bulls who prefer when the price goes down. Um, I yeah. you know, like, you know, that's a little different than most people, but, um, but, uh, but yeah, you know, that's, uh, I think we're still at the beginning of this and no, I don't think it's overcrowded, you know, that in, in, and again, you know, this, this play to earn thing is, is very, you know, each of these games have an economy to manage, just like countries have an economy to manage, you know, and I always use the example of the central banks, like these, the, the game DAOs or the game developers that are building these in game economies. You know, they have levers before, right? And none of it's guaranteed. You know, uh, Axie has to constantly change things and pull levers to, to, to help with, you know, the SLP price and things like that. And, and, you know, they're the pioneers. They're at the forefront trying to figure out this, you know, tokenization and er earning wages through a, a video game. But, um, you know, yeah. the, the only concern I have with Play to Earn is, is, you know, is it sustainable? But I think it is. You know, I think this first game that figures out the economic model it'll just be copied, you know, throughout the rest of them, you know, and, or at least the ones of that similar nature, right? Like, you know, if it's a battle game, but, um, yeah, you know, I, I think it's very early. Um, and you know, we'll see. Right. And I guess, um, uh, maybe, um, the different, you know, or there's different types of games. It's almost like uh, you could consider casino gaming. You know, I heard about a project where uh, all of a sudden the project puts on a timer and you buy keys, and the last person that puts an order in on a key gets uh, gets the prize, and then all the people that bought a key uh, before him, they all get a percentage of the total pot and everything is... Is that is that a lumped in play to earn type of deal? Is, I would consider that, that more. I would consider that more gambling, you know. And I think you know the blockchain is going to disrupt gambling as well. But um, I think that's more of gambling, you know, um, being picking something, drawing something, you know, mm -hmm. straight luck instead of no skill involved. Right. Right. No, I, I mean, I can. I don't. Don't really. Uh, find that much uh, differential between casino and gaming, especially when you're playing to win something. I mean, poker, you have a, a game a skill right there, so people consider that gambling. But um, I'm just wondering, uh, I can see, I, I get nervous because, like, um, I hear a play to earn and everything, and I really, you know, just as an investor, I, it kind of glosses over me at this point just because... I don't understand how um, why um, a big game developer uh, wouldn't just develop a badass game, and badass games take like three years to develop. Uh, why they wouldn't do one of these, you know, top tier games? And I don't understand why a, a project just doesn't uh, partner with the game to, um, pre you know, provide any type of uh, money transfers that need to go on. I, so, oh, because it's because in traditional gaming you don't own your assets. You know, if you're going to build a game like actually you have to start from the blockchain up. You know what I mean? You can't just start on your databases and servers and, and you know hope hope to have a, a, a flourishing economy like Axie has. 
You know, um, Axie is doing as much revenues as like CryptoPunks and Board Gate Club and, and more actually uh, over the past few months. So you know, it's a thriving marketplace. But um, no, you you can't. Yeah, there's going to be traditional gaming, and the reason why they're so hesitant to get here is because Axie just takes 4.5 percent. That's how that's how the, the, they make their money. You know, in Roblox they take 100 percent, right? So Axie taxes you, you know, 4.5 percent. While, uh, you know, and, and remember, every time you buy one of these axes, you're buying it from another player. You're not buying it from the developer, right? I mean, there's, you, you really need to go down the rabbit hole of blockchain gaming. It's fundamentally different. It, it is just going to swallow the regular gaming world. And, you know, the, these legacy shops are going to be hesitant because they're not going to make as much. But, you know, they're going to have to start competing with, you know, Sky Mavis, who makes Axie, and, you know, Alluvium and stuff like that because... They're going to draw in players, and, and you know that's the big break right now. The big uh, thing about player and gaming is there's no AAA titles, right? But right. you know, Minecraft is one of the most successful games of all time. It's been around for over a decade, and I wouldn't really consider that a AAA title. You know, back especially when it came out. You know, um, no, it, I agree. It, it, with it turned you. into one. So you know, and, and there's going to be a game for everybody, right? You know, sports, shooters, uh, you know, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Interesting. I, yeah, and I just like posing the argument because I'm I'm just not very uh very knowledgeable in that space. Yeah, I wasn't either. Um, but you just you should go down that rabbit hole. That's the good thing about crypto, right? It always provides these new rabbit holes for you to learn. Um, and, and you know, and it's open information. So you know, the people who learned about play to earn, you know, well, at the beginning of 2020, they did pretty well. So much happy. In, in I know it's things, right? So um, you know, it's it's different. It's a different dynamic. But um, I think yeah, it's well worth going down that rabbit hole. Do you want to? Do you want to ask a question, Zeus? No, I'm gonna thank you so much, Amy. I'm gonna let Zeus here speak now or ask a question if he has one. Uh, good evening, Yumanda. Do you want to? Do you want to ask a question, Zeus? Yeah, I want to ask a question. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, all right. Um, I heard him Ming mention like. How do you get access to the Human DAO platform? I heard him talk something about uh, the like using Discord, but I've been on their Discord server for a while. Like I just don't understand what is going on there, and I'm not really that versed with Discord since I'm new also to Discord. Yeah. So. Yeah. We also most of our metrics, you know, almost half of our users are new to Discord itself. So you know that that makes things even harder we try to make things easier to understand but you know the DAO lends the access the DAO has crypto wallets and it just you know you, you have to fulfill certain requirements to become a scholar um, and, and those things are going to change now as we've you know we're post token launch and now we have you know different kind of incentives to move people from applicants to scholars but um, you, what would happen is you would just participate in the DAO and then you know you show your interest, you, you uh, become an applicant, you help out the newbies who come, uh, and you know when you become a scholar, then you'll be handed you know login credentials to go play Axie from that account. That will have three Axies in there for you to play with, right? And then every day you you know you, you just play for a few hours, and if you're good, you, you earn more, uh, and uh, if you're not, you earn less. Okay. Does that answer your question? Mm, not quite. It's a little bit blurry, but like I get, I get the point. Like I have to like be participating or be active in your Discord in order to like uh, get, you know. Get yeah, you access. gotta help. We want people to help grow the DAO, right? Um, you know, so yeah, it's not like we have, you know, millions of actors just waiting for millions of people. You know, we're we're utilizing the treasury. Um, to buy these assets, and, you know, it won't just be Axie. You know, we want to we want to add more play to earn games as well, right? We don't want to be reliant on just one one play to earn game. So, um, you know, that that's in the future as well. But ask questions, you know, in all the play to earn channels, just ask questions, um, and, and someone will help you. All right. So for the like the theory Axie that you get in the account, can you like increase the money or? It's just like standard. And what if someone like just withdraws the whole Axie or it's not possible? 
it's not possible. None of this play to earn, none of this scholarship program would work if people could just take your assets. That's what's really interesting about this whole scholarship program. It wasn't it wasn't created by Axie. It was a, a community member in Axie stumbled upon it accidentally. And they realized, because you can log into the Axie game through your Ronin wallet, uh, your MetaMask, or your email, right? So people figured out if you get out your email and you log in, you know, people can play with it, but they can't take your, your, your axes. And, you know, so you can't, you can't run off with the, uh, the assets, right? And you actually depend on the DAO or the guild or whoever's giving you, your manager, if it's not through us, you know, you depend on them to pay you. Uh, and, you know, the way Axie works is, is every 14 days you can claim the tokens you have accumulated. So um, that's a little bit about how it works. And you earn uh, SLP, right? And that's SLP? what those scholars yeah, are the in the Discord for, is to help people such as yourself. Okay. So Thank you. you. Uh, I think I will just ask like more questions in the, in the Discord. These guys have learned what they've learned by asking the questions sure. as well. So. And that's what those scholars are in the Discord for, is to help people such as yourself, too. So I think if you've got questions or anything like that, that these guys are there or have learned what they've learned by asking the questions as well. So definitely suggest you do that. All right. Thank you. I have to say that answer you gave to him answered a lot of questions about your project for me. Uh, <laughs> okay. So I'm glad you answered that one. Which one, the, like how the whole thing works, you know, like well, just, uh, the uh, wallets. Yeah, yeah it, 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 now that just, it, it just kind of clicked. You, I had that clicking moment. Yeah. And yeah, not only about the next person, after, I, I just want to think, Alice, really if your mic isn't working, I'm sorry, but we'll have to so I gotta be, pull you better down or whatever, but you know, we want to be able to hear your question clearly. Okay, and now we'll let up the next person, Abbas. Uh, just one thing, Abbas, if your mic isn't working, I'm sorry, but we'll have to pull you down or whichever, but we want to be able to hear uh, your question clearly. I think it's disconnected for some reason, so we'll try one more time. Okay, go ahead, Abbas, and ask your question. Abbas, are you there, my friend? It disconnected for some reason, so we'll try one more time. Okay. Okay, go ahead, Abbas, and ask your question. How is it possible that every person can know about this and get benefits from this opportunity? Like I, think your he was, I think he was saying like how, how it is possible I'm that not every sure person exactly, know but about this. He was basically this. asking how will people learn about it. How is it how possible is that it, everybody knows about it? Is that, is, is that the question? I think he was saying like how, I'm not sure exactly, but he was basically asking how will people learn about it and how is it, is it a person's responsibility to teach people? Yeah, okay, so, um, you know, crypto is engulfing, you know, these, these uh, underserved communities. They're starting to hear about these things like Axie. So, you know, mm -hmm. there's a lot of demand already. Yes, I can hear you. Just, uh, I'm hoping I'm answering your question, but, um, you know, people that don't know about crypto, that's why we, you know, as these new people come into human DAO from these new locations mm -hmm. all over, mm -hmm. we want to, we want to in incentivize them. We want to incentivize them to be, um, to, to be ambassadors in their area. Right. So, uh, so, you know, and, you know, people always ask this question. There's a lot of people that don't have internet. There's a lot of people that don't have, you know, the hardware to do this. And that's true. You know, but obviously, as the years go by, more and more people enter the network, uh, the, the, the Internet. And, you know, we're not going to go build out some kind of, you know, network somewhere. Uh, you know, Mark Zuckerberg and Elon Musk are going to be doing that. And, you okay, know, I there's just a lot of demand here already. Person, you know, people buy these Android X phones, you know, these cheap Android and phones, and they're able to do a lot on them. Uh -huh. So, you know, there's a lot of, lot of demand already, you know. Go ahead and now I'm going to invite the next person up, user 0xd something, the default ETH. Give me one second. User 0xd, uh, <laughs> go ahead and ask, go your ahead and ask your question. Yeah, yeah. 
user zero uh, XD, go ahead and ask your question. Um, can you guys hear me? Oh, hi. Sorry yes. about that. Yeah. Um, I just had a question about: um, Are you guys planning on integrating Avogachi's and Avogachi land parcels? Well, what we want to do is let the community post what they think is the best, you know, next game to invest in. Uh, we want, you know, like to have this, we want the, 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 the community to, to do the research and due diligence. Uh, we want to iron that out to make the best decisions for the next next game as a community, right? So, you know, it's not like a me deciding what game. Um, we want to, you know, iron out this whole template or proposal for these new games because there's a lot of them coming. Right. And, uh, you know, once we get that template worked out, like, you know, why should the DAO invest? What's the barriers to entry in this game? What's the, the potentials of this game? Uh, you know, all, answer all just do really good due diligence and research, you know, all from the community, all from the people who like this game or invest in this game, and, you know, and then present that to the community. And then we vote on it. Right. And then then we if it passes the vote, if it passes, then we open up a sub DAO and, you know, we see see that sub DAO with funds to go out and start buying those assets. So, you know, a lot of people here, uh, you know, this is like ground zero for a DAO. You know, a lot of people join DAOs and it's already got people and, you know, you can't really do much or contribute much. But, you know, each of these sub DAOs is going to have subject matter experts, you know, that, um, that you know, come up with revenue streams, come up with a uh, potential to do, you know, whatever these in games, these games are huge. Like this, these in game environments are huge. Like Axie is going to be much bigger than this three on three battle, right? They have land game coming out. They've got all kinds of stuff down the roadmap, um, you know. And breeding is a whole revenue model. That's a whole new, sh you know, revenue stream that can be incorporated. So, yeah, you know, uh, the community decides at the end. By any chance, is the is like a snapshot available for us to start posting that and proposing? We're going to release the governance this week. Um, so, if you're not subscribed to the newsletter or following the Twitter, uh, you, you, you do that, and you'll know when the governance platform. It will be a snapshot. Um, but there's going to be steps before you get to the snap, snap, uh, snapshot, um, you know, in the forums it, within the community, right? Because the snapshot is how you can prove token holders are voting. Uh, but we need to we need to argue, we need to do our discourse, and uh, you know, and, and getting these things, these proposals, proper. We don't want to we don't want to spend treasury funds on something you know that wasn't properly thought out. And the game crashes, or you know, the game never really had a chance. Thank you so much and, for your and then those assets lose their value. Right? So, yeah, it, it, it's coming soon. By the end of the week, uh, it should you should get a newsletter or a tweet about it. Okay. Where to go? And how to do okay. it? Thank you so much for your question. And now we're gonna allow Crypto Jones up. Hey, Crypto Jones, you should be able to see them. Go. Again. Hey, Crypto Jones, you should be able to speak. Up. Okay. Um, so my question is about the tokenomics. So <clears throat> you basically explained about 70% um, or 80% is owned by the community. Um, but that's going to be vested over 10 years. And then, so I guess about 30% uh, right now will probably be the starting circulating supply now <clears throat> given the fact then that i like the tokenomics but like the founders and the advisors hold about 15 percent of that that's about half is circulating or starting circulating supply what's like the vesting schedule for that so that it's not like a immediate dump or crash or anything like sure that? yeah it's a great question um it's all in our docs by the way you go to our site you can click on docs and then under tokenomics this is all explained um, advisors have a, uh, they all have a TGE, right? A, 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 an initial amount that gets distributed in the beginning. Okay. But advisors have a one year lock and a three year vesting, linearly. Okay. Founders have a one year lock, four years vesting, linearly. Okay. Now, there's a thing that people, this is like a true community grassroots movement, right? So, you know, when all these other DAOs launch, their advisors, their teams, their um, builders, all those tokens are already delegated to people, right? Ours isn't. We like, you know, out of that TGE, mm -hmm. if you look at our if you look at our last post, you know, we haven't filled up 
the, the advisor slot. We haven't filled up the builder slots. Those aren't all delegated yet. Those are for future advisors and future builders because this is a very ambitious project. And, you know, we may need advisors in India. We may need to get advisors in Africa, South America, right? So those aren't delegated yet. So the, the actual circulating supply is very low. And 50 million tokens were in the public sale, but only 20 million sold, right? So okay. those other 30 million tokens are in the treasury. They're, they're in the multi suit right? Okay. Uh, the other tokens that we were describing, the advisors and the builder token, those are in the multi sig as well, right? And, and we're going to decide what to do with it. And 50, uh, like the community allocation, is in the in the multi sig as well. So the, the actual circulating supply is, I would say, 30 million or less um, at this very moment. And uh, yeah, it, it's very low. And you know, we wanted to make sure we had tokens to, to incentivize the people down the road. So um, yeah, there's you know, all this information is in the docs. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I don't want it. Sure. I have one more question. So, um, <coughs> I know we're using Axie as the, uh, that's the, uh, the example, but for, uh, I'm trying to understand how the, the token uh, embeds itself into this play to earn model. So let's say for instance, uh, someone is playing Axie and you have a scholar they're using, um, someone's Axie to earn the SLP. How is it that the human DAO token is embedded into that whole transaction. Like, how does the human DAO token have value? Through buy-in. Yeah. That's, that's also in the docs under uh, um, a value accrual, right above tokenomics. So you got them right above, the, below each other. But okay. I will explain to you like this. It's a revenue, right? So yeah. in the Axie world, we give 70% of the tokens to the scholar, 10% to the manager, the DAO makes 20%. Right. Okay. So, so that's how it accrues value in that one thing. But there is other ways this token it can accrue value as well. Um, you know, through multiple utility. Obviously, governance is a big one, right? But um, you know, yeah, th these revenue streams could become pretty, pretty big if you're in the beginning of play to earn. You know, in a few years. Um, so, so yeah, so, it, it's got uh, the value accrual is all in that much. So, um, so my question, so just taking that example you use, and maybe I need to understand this better. Um, so 70% goes to the scholar, get that. 10% goes to the manager, get that. 20% goes to the, to the DAO. So the DAO gets the SLP token. Now, how does the SLP token that the DAO earns then convert to value accrual for the human DAO token? So I get that the SLP token um, has value because you can sell that on the, the secondary market and you get it that way. But I'm, I'm it's not the same. It's the same way merit circle and YGG business model works. It's the exact same way. Um, so you're building up your treasure, right? Mm -hmm. uh, if if SLP is low, the DAO doesn't need to sell it. You know, the DAO doesn't need to sell, but it can still provide wages. And maybe you know SLP goes from four cents to forty cents. Then the DAO can sell you know a good portion and, and realize those gains. But the, the business model is the same. Current, current, our current business model is the same as YDG and um, Merit Circles. Um, yeah, and, and you know, down the road, maybe the token holders in the community vote to give themselves a dividend. I don't know. I don't control that, right? Um, but okay. this is this is this is uh, you know that's all it's all possible you know, through through a community owned project. So. Okay, so so the the token right now does not hold like a dividend that you can get from the actual uh, in-game token that the DAO receives from the player. So there's no kind of dividend uh, model, at least at this point, built into it. Correct. Where, where I can that's, say that's that. most... Oh, oh okay. Because uh, I don't understand how Merit Circle works. I'm just, you know, I, I'll probably have to go down this a little bit uh, more to understand it. So I was thinking that, okay, when you said that, then the amount of tokens that I hold, there will be some type of dividend or claimable amount that I can actually withdraw. But at this point, then there is just, nothing like that. We're just taking a portion of the revenue stream into the Dow Treasury. You know, uh, just like Uniswap has fees on every trade, um, they, they they stock up their treasury, right? Yeah. So same like, thing, just a different way of doing it. But when I use Uniswap and I'm an LP holder, I get, I, I, I go and I claim my, my, uh, 
my transaction fees. So I'm just trying to figure out where the actual right, but, ability of but getting some the, fee from this token. Right, that's, a, that's an ancillary benefit, right? The actual Uniswap DAO token itself doesn't give that dividend out either. You see what I'm saying? Yes, yes if so. you join a liquidity pool, yes, you can do that. And you can still do that with us. You, know, you can join a liquidity pool, uh, okay. get percentages of the fee, uh, you know, and through our staking and liquidity rewards, we're going to reward those who lock up their tokens. And that's a big part of the tokenomics I didn't really get into yet. But, um, you know, we want to incentivize staking and locking up because then people will stay around longer, they will vote, they will be part of the government, right? So, you know, we want to incorporate something similar to, you know, like Alluvium made popular this variable weight staking contract where if you decide to lock it up for a year, um, you know, you get twice the bonus, uh, twice the rewards, right? If you do six months, you get, you know, 1.5 of uh, the bonus instead of two. Um, so, so we're looking to, you know, make that, uh, you know, one of the big building blocks so people do, you know, lock up their tokens and, and you know, use that government platform. Okay, awesome. Yeah. And this is just a comment, so I, I like the project, like the, the idea and everything of it, but, you know, maybe later along, down the line, might even think of incorporating like some type of real world thing, like fair trade on certain um, um, actual um, commodities out there for different countries. That might be a good uh, use case for something like this. What What do you mean? I'm, I'm, I'm not, uh, I don't understand. Like fair trade. So like, yeah, so like, uh, if, like if, like, if you're looking like, you know, just an instance coffee, you know, um, my wife will always look for brands that are fair trade where they make sure that the people that are growing the coffee beans are getting a good portion of that. But with blockchain and everything like that, you may even be able to introduce something where those coffee bean growers can interact directly with a buyer and not even have to deal with a middleman that's taking even more of their money. So just something like that since the whole thing is about uh, getting people um, wages and uh, improving their, their lives. Yeah, that's a, that's a good idea. That's something to think about. You know, you could, that could be applied, you know, lending out axes through the DAO. You know, that's more of a marketplace. We don't have that yet. Um, you know, but we have a lot of interest for people who have axes that want to lend them out. So the yeah. DAO can make, you know, a cut from there. Um, but, um, you know, it could also be used um, you know, this is why I think it's better that DAOs come into effect in play to earn because there's already been lots of reports of managers that are unscrupulous doing, taking the, 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 the scholar's money, never paying them out or, you know, even trying to get new pictures from them and stuff like that, right? So that's why I think it's important to, and, and mind you, if we are truly in the zero to one moment of, of this gaming blockchain world, you know, when these masses come into Axie Infinity, for example, they're going to increase the price floor of Axies, making it pretty much impossible for regular people, even small farms, or small scholarship farms, to actually, you know, flourish. So would you rather have a private company in control of that world or a real DAO? You know what I mean? Where, where the community can voice their opinion and say, hey, I'm being abused or I'm doing this or, or whatever the case may be. And then we could, you know, nip that in the butt, right? Um, and and a lot of these big, you know, a lot of these big gaming guilds, they're they're just masquerading as private companies. You know, forty percent, maybe even more, sometimes are in the hands of a small percentage of people. So when they decide something, that's pretty much what's going to happen. Uh, you know, in, in that world. Uh, so that's why I think it's important, and people need to think, you know, down the line some, because you know, axes could cost a thousand dollars a piece. You know. At, at, you know, for a good one, you want a good one to battle, right? You know, and, and that price, that's the only, that's the main reason why play to earn or the scholarship thing is so prevalent and is taking off is because there is that barrier in each of these games. There's a barrier, right? And, you know, because of the way crypto works, people that have assets can actually lend it to people that don't have assets and, you know, they provide a job. So like if you were just doing a personal uh, scholarship farm, you'd probably take 50%, 60%. You know, as a DAO, can afford to get more you because know, they can grow and scale, just, right? Just, so yeah, there's and I think they'll trade the same thing for these kind of uh, structures. Down, you know, the but real DAOs. Anyone else that wants to ask a question? Yeah.
Thank you so much. Did you do that? And then we'll yep, announce some question. winners. I got two random numbers from no, so that I can I'm just looking to see the, if there was somebody else. The, there was someone else on our side and then, then went down again. But if there's anyone else that wants to ask a question, we, can we could do that and then we'll uh, announce the winners. I got two random then, numbers uh, from Patty so that I can announce who won the the crypto on our side and then if human DAO wants to announce afterwards or during, they can announce during who they feel uh, asks the best questions, and then uh, we can close it up from there potentially. And I was just gonna yeah, there's Ronan. Right there. Whoever came up to talk. So if you wanted to do that later, human DAO, you can as well. And if the let them know that they won. And I was just going to mention before Ronick speaks, I took snapshots of whoever's came up to talk. So if you wanted to do that later, human DAO, you can as well and, and give them the, uh, let them know that they won. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So go well, ahead. it's just on human DAO, but they're, yeah, they're hello. basically, you'd have to be here, hello. I guess, to ask the appropriate question for them. Yeah, so what do I think for them? Like, I'm not sure. And what they're planning on oh, okay. Well, it's just on human suggest. DAO. You go on and they're, Discord and you they're basically, human DAO, you have to be here, to I guess, to ask the appropriate channel. question for them. Well, like, you apologize, but you, you, apologize, you, but you need to know a little bit about their so project and what they're planning on doing. But definitely, Ronick, I suggest you go on to Discord and you find human DAO, or we get human DAO to tweet their Discord channel up above as well if you want to. I forgot to mention that. So people can go join in there and actually uh, get an idea of what they're about, what the different gaming groups are about, or what the scholarship Anyone programs are about. It's definitely question, the way to go. Or so, wants to re-ask a question, that's fine with me okay, too. Okay, okay, okay. Cool. Anyone else in the space that wants to ask a question, or wants to re-ask a question, that's fine with me too. There we go. Hello, how are you? Hi. I'm good. There we go. Hello, how are you? How are you? I'm good. Yeah, my uh, there's one question which I am I I was to ask to you is that that right now there is so much uh, thing is going on in the indian parliament regarding cryptocurrency and we hope it should be it will go better than past so my one question is that that as we are using big one exchange for a last for a long time and it is a very much good exchange than other others exchange as compared to indian exchanges so my question is that if in case in future in I, Indian I'm Parliament sorry, told, uh, will tell us that, that, that uh, we, you, you uh, should uh, only use you Indian exchanges for cryptocurrency, right then what would be the plan for Big One exchange? Will it take the license so in I mean, India? Or I, I'm sorry, I can't even answer that question. What of course is that Big One is going to do, and I'll just say it right now, is that they're going to follow the regulations for whatever the countries are and what they need to do. So I mean, all you can do is look forward to the future and hope uh, whatever happens is to the benefit of you. But I don't, I don't know what India is going to do yet. There's still a lot of talk on. Is there anything they're doing in the end that what they're going to do? So it'll be interesting to see in the future well. what's going to happen. I feel like maybe if we let them Okay, it, okay. Fine, you. thank you. Is there anything in the end that we might have missed or anything you might want to talk about as well? I feel like maybe if we left anything out for you? Um, no, I mean, I think we hit it all. There's a lot. You know, just check out the uh, site. You can get through everything from the site. But we're going to be pushing out a, a, a brand new refresh of the site, make it more gamey, gamified. Um, but, you know, everything will be able to be accessed through the site. You know, the community is the server. So click on that. You want to learn about the tokenomics and everything underneath the hood of this DAO. Uh, go into the um, docs. Subscribe to the newsletter so you can stay up to date. You know, this is this is a very unique project in crypto. There's been a lot of philanthropic uh, projects 
you know, that have social impact projects uh, that have come and gone. But you know, wrapping exactly that social Kristen. impact Thank around you so around much for taking the time with us today. I think it's going to have a lot I of really space. Truly it can do a lot of good. Um, you know, as the years go through with this uh, movement of disruption. Oh, exactly, Kristen. Thank you so much for taking the time with us today. I really, truly appreciate you so coming to here. Like, I guess uh, you haven't been to any of our spaces right before, but our biggest thing is crypto to come together and work together to make ourselves better. That's our our mission here at Big One, because I think, like, there's and so much divide uh, in cryptocurrency right now. There. And the more that you have projects you such as yourself that are working for the betterment, the really better off we're going to be. Like the the divide between, uh, I hate to say it, but there's a lot of scammy coins and scammy things out there. So seeing you showing people how to get into it properly, it, I really appreciate it a lot. Thank you. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I agree with you. We shouldn't be divided. You know, back eight years ago, when this all started for me, it was always about you know, oh, if you know, once people started earning Bitcoin, it's game over, right? It was never. It's not. It didn't turn out to be Bitcoin. It's SLP, <laughs> but that's how the masses are coming into crypto now, right? And you know, underserved communities don't really have a, a bone to pick with any maximalism or this coin, that coin, this L1, that smart contract. They just want to earn wages. So if we, you know. We can get them to if we can incentivize them to learn about crypto. It's you know the broad use cases, well, the benefits, how to secure your wallet. You know, I think that just makes the entire industry grow you know, in exponentially in, in the coming years. Um, because there's just so much coming in these later games to the scholarship folks. Well, and it's just amazing like seeing what's happening. Like I'm a big believer in in that whole thing. Like my my wife's family being from the Philippines and stuff like that. Like I've been there, I've experienced it, and to hear that they're getting bigger and bigger into cryptocurrency means the world to me because, I mean, there's a lot of countries that don't have opportunities to do everything. They have the cell phone networks, they have everything there to hook on to stuff, but they have nothing, no way of starting a business or doing something, so I truly appreciate what's going on. So, Yeah, that whole uh, Africa leapfrogging, you know, the uh, cell tower, or the... Uh, landlines right and going straight to mobile phones you know that's probably what's going to happen here in, in, uh, in gaming and um you know this metaverse Definitely you know that's going to open up a lot of so my name is potential for jobs you know a lot of potential on Twitter so uh, yeah we're, we're happy to be so here early be and you know we need builders and we need scholars so I yeah, have come join us Definitely, 100%. I'm going to stop in. So my name is CryptoB32. I have it on Twitter. And I'm on Discord, so I'll definitely be in your spaces and come and check it out. And I hopefully have Andy in there sooner or later saying hello as well, too, because I think he's a big proponent of what you believe in as well. So thank you for taking the time, and thank you, everybody, for stopping in our space. Uh, we definitely went over that hour, so but I still appreciate people taking the time to listen and learn that's what it's about so thank you so much for dropping in and uh, let me um who was the person that asked the question of, about the comment for fair trade i believe that was was it not crypto jones i believe crypto jones yes is he still yes. here yes okay cool yeah you know um dm me your uh east polygon address okay. and i will send you 50 dollars worth of h house okay um, that, that to me was you know that was a good comment and question very good questions um so yeah just you know human dow twitter just dm me the uh, polygon um address and as for the, the next 50 dollars you know randomly i'm just going to pick somebody out of that's still here um i wish i could pick all of you <laughs> but let's go with um Let's go with Arun. Arun M. Can you like make a, an emoji or, or something so I know you can hear me? Oh, there it is. All right, Arun, same thing. DM me um, your Ethereum 
Polygon address. Oh, that's awesome. so if you use MetaMask, so you get the same and address. Uh, winners for ours Obviously, you know, you use layer one, Polygon's layer two. But um, winner, and you know, send it to me, and I'll send you $50 for cake as well. And I'll make sure there you go, that's you awesome. Thank it. you so much. And I mean, so the winner for ours guys, is Zeus right now soon. is winner, and I'm just going to have to look through the other pictures, but I will announce on Twitter later today, mm-hmm. and I'll make sure to do have a wonderful day, everyone. As well. So thank you so much for coming in the space, you guys, and we will be talking soon. Yes, thanks for having me, and, you know, it was a pleasure, and it was fun. Thank you. Yes.